Have you ever been told that you need to love yourself or practice a little bit more self-love? Well, in this video, I wanna share three verses what the Bible says regarding self-love. Let's go. Hey everyone, my name is Eric Manjadas. I am a Bible teacher and executive pastor. In this video, we're gonna be talking about what self-love is and what the Bible teaches regarding it. When I first started seminary, I was in my biblical interpretation class and we were going over the command to love God and love our neighbor. And there's a student in that class who had shared her thoughts on that passage and she interpreted it as, I need to love myself first before I love my neighbor. And maybe you felt that way, where you need to care for yourself first, love yourself, do everything you can to make yourself happy before you love others. And the first passage that I want to examine is Matthew 22, 36 through 40. In this passage, the Pharisees send a lawyer to question Jesus in order to trick him. And the lawyer asks him, teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? In other words, what is the greatest commandment in the Old Testament? What is the greatest commandment out of the Ten Commandments? And Jesus responds and says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. And the last part of this passage, to love your neighbor as yourself, often gets interpreted as if it says, love myself and then love my neighbor. When actually Jesus is already assuming that we already love ourselves. If you believe this passage is saying that you need to love yourself first before you love others, well, let me ask you, when will you have loved yourself enough? See, the reality is, is that we'll always have something that we're insecure about. But just because we have things about ourselves that we don't like, doesn't mean that we don't already love ourselves. See, we wake up every morning, we brush our teeth, we feed ourselves every day, we look in the mirror before we go outside. We show that we love ourselves all the time. In fact, the Bible actually teaches us that we don't have a, a self-love problem. We actually have a problem with loving ourselves too much, even to the point of not going out and loving others, and in fact, continuing to self-love. The interesting thing about this Matthew 22 passage is that there's two commands in this passage, not three. The first command is to love God. The second command is to love your neighbor as yourself. There isn't actually three commands. It's not love God, love yourself, and then love your neighbor. Jesus is actually already assuming that you love yourself. He's saying the way that you love yourself, actually go and love your neighbor that way. The second passage that I want to examine is Philippians 2, 3 through 4, which is do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but consider others more significant than yourself. The Apostle Paul is telling the church in Philippi that this is the conduct of how a Christian is supposed to act. In this passage, it's saying to actually lay down your self-interest for the purpose of loving others. In this Philippians passage, Jesus is the prime example of what it looks like to love your neighbor. He is king over all. He is God. Jesus humbles himself to the point of the cross, dying to forgive others others of their sins, securing them for eternal life. Jesus is not going to the cross for himself. He's doing it to satisfy God's wrath on sin and to save sinners like you and me. And Paul says, in the last days, people will be lovers of self. And then there's this long list of what people will be like, but it first begins with lovers of self. And it's actually not a good thing. In fact, it's more so saying that we are so consumed with ourselves that we only look out for us in our own interests. And I'm not saying to dislike yourself or to hate yourself. I'm actually saying the way that you love yourself, love someone else that way. We actually don't have a problem in America with loving ourselves. Our problem actually is that we love ourselves too much. And the way of Christ is actually self-denial. We deny our own desires for Christ's desires and what he wants for our lives. And what he wants for our lives is to love God and love others, teaching them to obey all of Jesus's commands. In conclusion, the center of the universe is not us. It's not you and it's not me, it's God. And the root of our problem isn't that we don't love ourselves accurately, it's that we don't love God accurately. 
That Matthew 22 command to love God and love your neighbor as ourselves begins with the command to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love God with everything in you. When you love God with everything in you, you also come to an understanding that you were created in His image. Your happiness and your love for yourself should actually come not within you, but from God. What he says about you, you're created in his image, meaning you have value, you have dignity, you are important, you are significant. A challenge that I would have for you is to see the way that you care for yourself. Examine how you love yourself and do that for someone else. Hey, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe and share, and I'll see you next time.